What is the perfect line through a corner? How on earth do you find the line? What happens when you get off the line? Stick around, today we'll be showing you how to find your way around corners, not with lines, but by explaining how to define entrances, apexes, and exits. Hello, fellow canyon chasers. Many of us have heard or read about apexes and delayed apexes. We've probably all seen that corner apex graphic, but still, for many of us, it's not exactly an easy thing to get our heads around. But just like discovering trail breaking, learning how to define entrances, apexes, and exits changed my world by giving me an even deeper level of control when riding the twisty bits. Which circle could you ride around fastest? The big one? The small one? Which one would require less or more lean? Obviously, to go fast around the small circle would require more lean angle than the same speed around the big circle. This is a fundamental law of motorcycling. Speed and radius are inexorably linked. Now, throw traction into the mix. The more we lean, the more traction we are using, and that is the eternal balancing act that is cornering. If you've watched our trail breaking video, then you heard me talk about making the circle smaller by slowing or making the circle bigger by going faster. When we go to the gas, the bike stops turning and the circle starts to get bigger unless you add more lean angle. Riders who stick with the slow look press and roll method, particularly in tight technical corners, tend to struggle with running wide. So why is that? Well, first, lean angle is not infinite and is largely dependent upon the type of bike we're on, what kind and what condition our tires are in, how much luggage or if we have a passenger, how good is our cornering posture, and honestly, how comfortable we are with lean angle. And then there are the road condition variables to consider. Is it uphill, downhill, off camber, banked, wet, or dry? The reality is a lot of riders give up in a corner when they get scared simply because they are uncomfortable or afraid to lean the bike any further. And sure, some may say, well, just lean more. But I say there's a better way to approach this than just trying to muscle past your fear. And that approach is to have a plan for every corner we ride into. And part of that plan is defining our entrance, apex, and exit. Within the context of motorcycling, the entrance is where we begin turning. The exit is where we are finished turning, and the apex is the point where the bike is closest to the inside of the corner, while still being in our lane. Typically about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way through a corner. But a lot of us, and I dare say, most of us tend to apex too soon. We tend to go to the inside of the corner early or rush our apex. Why? Well, because it feels safer especially riders who use the slow look press and roll method. These riders tend to apex early because as I just mentioned, as soon as we go to the gas, the bike stops turning and wants to go wide. So having all that extra space feels safer, but is it actually safer? We want to widen the arc of the corner as much as we can to straighten the turn and reduce lean angle. We want to put our tires on the cleanest part of the road. We want to increase how far we can see through the corner as much as we can. We want to be able to get on the gas and accelerate out of the corner safely. And finally, and most importantly, we want to stay on the road and in our lane. Staying wide and gently slowing until we can see our exit and then defining our apex is one of the best ways to achieve all of these goals and one of the most important steps required to put ourselves in the best position to do all of this is to enter the corner as wide as we safely can. Let me say this again. We want to enter corners as wide as we safely can. So we know that we want to enter wide and then apex or be closest to the inside of the corner about two thirds of the way through the turn, give or take. But if it's a corner we've never been through or a corner we can't see all the way through, how on earth can we tell where two thirds is? How do we find that apex? Well, as we enter a corner wide, we want to stay wide until we can see and line up our exit with our apex. So 
If we were to draw a straight line backwards from the outside of the exit to our current position, that line will touch the apex. Here's another example. But one thing, especially as street riders, that we need to keep in mind, even if our tires are in our lane, our body and our bike may not be. This is most relevant if the inside line of a corner is also the center line for the highway. For street riding, our lane is our limit. We never want to cross that center line with our tires or even just our head. If we are trail braking into corners, which we really should be, we will be gently slowing until we can see our exit and identify our apex. If we are doing everything right in most cases, this point will be where the bike will have the most lean angle, but we will be going the slowest, which minimizes risk as we turn and line up for our apex. We can basically trail brake, gently slow with our front brake to decrease speed, which makes the circle smaller to steer the bike down and to the apex we've chosen. In other words, we are using speed, in this case our front brake, to control the radius of our corner to put the bike where we want it. When we slow into a corner, it's very unlikely the bike will run wide because speed equals radius. The slower we go, the smaller the circle or the arc of our corner. Remember how I said that as soon as you go to the throttle, the bike stops turning? Well, now that we've arrived at our apex, we can use that to bring the bike up and out of the corner. Listen, we only want to use one control at a time. And the more we lean, the less pressure we should put on the front brake. But the same goes for the throttle. We only want to slowly add throttle as we slowly take away lean angle. Think of it like this. We like how quickly we can get to the gas on the red circle, but entering on the inside of that corner means we have to be going much slower and we can't see very far. We like the visibility that the yellow circle supplies, but we don't get pointed towards our exit for a very long time, so we have to wait longer before we can go back to the gas. The orange circle is the natural combination between the yellow circle and the red circle, but by taking the best components of the yellow and red circle instead of an average like the orange circle, we come up with the blue line, which is the best of all pieces. We get to enter wide with visibility. We get to slow longer for more accurate and precise control. We are at max lean for a lot less time, reducing risk. We get pointed the way we want to go earlier and get to accelerate past the apex, making the next straight bit a little bit longer. And that is basically the point. The key to a good corner is how we exit that corner. We are slower and more cautious going into a turn so that we can set ourselves up for a strong, fast exit. Motorcycles simply behave and turn better using the delayed apex method. It's the method used by every single pro racer you see on the track. And if you watch MotoGP, they have these amazing on-screen graphics where you can see exactly how much brake and throttle they are using through the corner as they enter wide, slowing down to delay and define their apex, then as they slowly go back to the gas to drive out of the turn. But for us mere mortals riding on the street or even a local track day, the delayed apex, particularly when combined with trail braking, is this blissful and repeatable combination of inputs to give us a clear plan for every corner we enter, whether that be a freeway on-ramp, a favorite corner at your local track, or some random turn in some random canyon that you've never seen before and may never see again. Look, the line is past tense. It's a great way to explain where we've been, but it's a terrible planning tool. It's not like those video games with a line showing you the way around a corner that turns colors if you are going too fast. But with entrances, apexes, and exits, we can look for and define the specific points and achieve repeatable results. If it's a corner we do all the time, we can play with them, apex a little sooner and see what happens apex a little later and see how that feels. And we can self-evaluate based on these points.
For example, if you find yourself running wide on corner exits, having to pull the bike back onto the road, that just means that either you apex too soon, you rushed your apex, or you went to your throttle too soon or too abruptly, which we've all done. But now you know that next time, or for the next time you ride that corner, move your apex further away, or be more patient with how and when you apply the throttle. Here's the cool thing. Wide entrances, delayed apexes, and fast exits are one of those rare instances where not only does it reduce risk, but it's also one of the quicker ways to ride a corner because you are going slowest when you are leaned the most, and it basically makes the next straightaway just a little bit longer. Fast riders aren't necessarily fast in the corners, fast riders are fast getting out of the corners. One of my favorite questions when I'm coaching out at the track is when a rider comes up and asks, I just can't find a fast line through that really tight corner. And I have to explain to them, it's a slow corner. There is no fast line through a slow corner. But if you're conservative at the beginning, trail break and enter wide, then delay your apex, you can at least enjoy a fast exit. Below, we've linked to some amazing reading resources that we encourage everyone to pick up and read, as well as some credible writing programs where you can get some personalized coaching. If you thought this video was at all valuable, please give it a thumbs up, or even better than that, subscribe and click on the little bell to be notified when we upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and ride well. Thank you.